So on my hand here is actually one of the uh, very interesting headphones. This is the Rao Requisite CA1A. You can see this is a really, really interesting headphone itself. And not only that, <laughs> you notice that it actually requires its own very specialized transformer that takes from a headphone amp into this transformer and into this device. And the reason is very simple. The Rao Requisite CA1A, it's a ribbon-based headphone. You can see it is a rectangular driver that is about 8 cm long. If you actually look from the inner, you can see this driver here. You can see the driver, let's say, let me turn this thing a bit. You can see the driver here. This 8 cm long uh, full spectrum you know, ribbon headphone is quite rare. There is not many headphones that utilize this technology. And because of its ribbon-like, you know, uh, design, it requires firstly a very special, very high current drive, plus it needs, uh, you know, a lot of power, tons and tons of power. Now, the whole reason why you need a transformer, of course, it's not just about power, it's because the output, the impedance of this headphone is less than one ohm. And, you know, if you were to plug this headphone into your normal headphone amplifiers, it may overload them very easily. Therefore, the transformer will convert any power that is coming out from a headphone amplifier into something that can be utilized by this particular headphone here. And not only that, it will have very, very low output impedance and therefore be able to drive this headphone with no issues. Now, obviously, there is no way to drive the headphone directly from an amplifier, so you have to use the transformer, which I'm not sure whether it has its own sound signature or not. I do know that the CA1A can be driven by its own RAW requisite type of uh, headphone amplifiers and also those from Shits Audio. So there are a few ways to you know utilize this headphone itself. But before I go too in-depth into those things, first let's talk a little bit on the build quality of this headphone here. Now, the headphone when you purchase it comes with the headphone and this transformer here. It comes with a couple of cables. You can see this is the cable. There's two cables, one from the M to the transformer, transformer to the headphone himself. That's pretty much what they give. Now, let's first talk about the headphone. You can see this is a very industrial design. In fact, I actually quite like it. It's actually very light and nice to use. All right? And you can see that this is the band. It's, it's actually slightly leaning forward. If I just hold my headphone like this, notice that the driver is actually tilted forward. So this is a slightly leaning forward kind of design. And you can see this headband here is uh, very interesting. It's just a piece of leather. And then they put holes on it that you can just adjust by like, you know, pulling this open and then adjust it. So it's really like a belt. And you can do it left and right side of the headphones. So both sides, you can adjust it. Total of five positions. Yeah, five, six or five or six positions that you can actually adjust this band. So it's actually quite limited in number of positions. But at least for me, this position is just nice. Now, if you look at the cup itself, this cup here is, I believe, carbon fiber. Uh, really nice material, ask me. It's really nice. It's not cold, not warm. Even the aircon is really nice. Then this is, of course, the driver itself. Now, the band itself is made of, I think, spring steel. So, you know, it does spring back very well and it's very durable. You can bend it around, no issues. The amount of clamp force is very minimal. It is actually a very comfortable headphone. Now, the interesting part is the, I'll say as the, uh, our, uh, let me take it out first. Now, these are the um, ear pads. So, you attach them onto the ear cups as such. You see, this is the driver. And these pads, you can see, it looks darn cheap. And <laughs> they gave actually two of these. One is with the slot and one is without. So, this is the slot version. Now, I think that uh, this done cheap, but I remember the price of replacing the pads are not very high. Plus, you can make own, you can even make your own pads. You know, if you follow the design here properly, you can make your own pads. And uh, well, I guess pads are meant to be disposable or you know, long term wear and tear. So I guess there is no issue to this. The pads, you can see, the foam is actually quite nice foam. You know, it doesn't spring back immediately, so it's actually a good quality dense foam. Uh, it does sit nicely, a bit rough on the head, but uh, it is still very soft and generally enjoyable to wear on the head itself. So if you ask me build quality on this headphone, it's pretty, pretty good. 
Very, very nice quality. Now, the weight itself is also very light. I think it's 440 grams. So it is a very light headphone considering that this is a full can. Now, the connector below, you can see here, these are standard 3.5mm connectors and you put it in. I do like the cables coming out from this headphone itself. Look at these cables here. Now, these are cables. They are, you know, twisted together. And these cables here are actually really nice, very thin, doesn't create too much sound, and are really light. I actually like this kind of cable. I, I don't really like the thick cables that some of the manufacturers give, or the cables with the shielding, and that even makes it even harder and more, I guess, hard to bend at all. So I really like these twisted cables, which are very soft and nice. So that is really, you know, the whole build quality, I quite like it. The Whatever the transformer is giving, the cables it's given, I do really like the quality overall. And uh, if you ask me for a headphone of this price, the quality is uh, pretty much, I guess, acceptable and good for me. Now, I mean, some may argue that the, you know, the pads are not great, but I guess the way that they are designed is for easy changing and, you know, it's meant to be change anyway due to wear and tear, I think I'm pretty okay with it as long as it doesn't sell expensive. In fact, you can make your own as, as I said. Now, according to Rao is that these pads are designed for a certain sound signature. So actually, if you put the one without the slot, it's a slightly different form and it sounds quite different. Uh, for this particular review, I want I will do the one with the slot because the one without the slot, uh, very boomy and a little bit muddy. I mean, I right now in my Hate5 review, I'll put it in the link in the description once the review is also up. But I tell you that it's much, much better to use the slotter one. You lose bass, but you get a whole lot better things, you know, in terms of everything else from the mids to the highs, it is a lot better this way. Now, uh, something new on my table you notice is that there are amplifiers. So normally I don't show them. This is actually the Topping A70 Pro. This is the Burson GT. 3XGT and then below there is the GSX Mini. And the reason why I'm showing all this M today, you know, in this thing is because this headphone requires insane amount of power. Now, this insane amount of power is because, as I said earlier, it uses a very low impedance, high, high current requirement driver and total amount of power needed for this headphone easily goes to 1 to 2 watts or even 3 watts if you are listening loud. Now, the thing is that unlike other headphones like the Susvara, I will argue that the Susvara do not need more than 1 watt of power or even half a watt of power unless you are going for broke and want to make yourself deaf. But for the purpose of uh, normal listening, Susvara will never need more than 0.5 watt of power. But this guy here needs that amount of power. It needs easily, you know, in enjoyable listening uh, or says condition, you will need at least 1 to 2 watts of power. If you listen loud, easily 3 watts of power or even 4 watts of power. Why do I know that? Because my player here, this is the M17, it outputs 3 watts of power, gets overloaded by this uh, headphone. If I was listening modern song with a measured peak of about 105 decibel, it starts overloading. Now, that is still very loud, very, very loud. But you have to understand that the Susvara wouldn't even take anywhere. It would take only a fraction of the power of 105. But this guy actually takes more than that easily. You know, this guy, I guess the amount of power required is at least three to four times whatever Susvara needs. Maybe, you know, this is quite equivalent to or even worse than the HG6 and uh, I guess only the tungsten may need more power than this. So as such, you know, all the amps I have here are amps that can drive that amount of power up to 6 watt of power easily. This is, uh, the A70 I believe can drive up to 10 watts. This is like 10 watts and this is like 6 watt and all of them do work very well with this headphone. But before I talk about the sound quality of the headphone with the M, let's talk a little bit more on you know, the general sound quality of this headphone here. Now, if you have seen certain reviews out there, people always say that the sound stage is big. And yes, the sound stage of this is big. It is a really huge and immersive sound stage. I would say it's immersive because you feel like you're drowning in the sound stage itself. It's extremely wide sound stage. Uh, but that being said, even for a white sound state, it doesn't have very good imaging nor very good layering. Uh, it feels like you roughly know where the sound is coming from, but you never quite really feel where the sound 
exactly is. It feels like a well diffused hall. Means the details are all there, the instruments are all there, it's very clear. You know roughly where all the instruments are, but you know, you, you don't get a distinct this instrument is at the 5 degree mark, this instrument is at the 10 degree mark kind of thing. You get like this instrument, uh, I think it's on the top left kind of feel. So this is really how the sound, sound stage and the imaging sounds like for the CA1A. Now in terms of its general tonality, I think this is on the neutral to slightly bright tone, slightly cool tone. Uh, it is not a very bright headphone by the way. In fact, if you ask me in terms of its general brightness, I think it's actually quite a little bit dull on the higher frequency. In fact, this headphone has almost no sibilance in the higher mids or lower treble region. Uh, there is probably a dip there and you really don't get siblings. Now, for people like me, I do like that, but some people like the bite there and the excitement there. <laughs> I don't like it, but um, I like this actually sound signature itself. A side dip in the four, five, six kilohertz kind of range where siblings is. So this guy has very little siblings. Of course, it comes at the cost of certain instruments who are in the region. It sounds softer or weird with this particular headphone. Now, that said, no, the higher treble is fine. You know, there is still the sparkle, still the very nice, uh, I would say as, um, how do I put it? Sparkly sound that's a bit hot, but not exactly overwhelming. The treble is pretty nice on this. It's just only that region where sibilance is, it's actually quite toned. Now, uh, when you actually go down the range and you go down to like say, the mids itself, I think the mids are very nice. I think guitars and violins sound really good as long as they are mainly in the mids, not in the higher mids. Sounds really nice, very plucky, very fast. One thing about this headphone is that it is very speedy, the transition, the transient energy to be exact, is very good for such instrument. All the, all the string and plucky instruments just sound really nice on it, very fast, very quick, very plucky. Uh, the response of the drivers to the power is fantastic. Now, when it comes to the lower mids uh, and the bass region, I think that is where things are a little bit little. I think the lower mids onwards, it starts reducing. So it's actually a slightly neutral and more towards the cool side of sound because of the lowering of the lower mids. And into the bass region, well, there is bass, there is impact, but you know, it's not a lot. And sub bass is uh, very minimal. I think the sub bass on this is really, really little. So if you are looking for the rumbly feel, no, this headphone don't give. If you're looking for just impact, I think this headphone still gives the impact itself. Now, I want to cover also a little bit on the clarity. Now, as I said, the sound stage is very wide uh, and you know, it's not very precise, but clarity is still really, really good on this. Details are also very good as long as they are in the mids region and high. Now, for the bass region, I would say as um, sub bass has almost no feels and texture to it. Mid bass is still okay, it's pretty punchy and you know, if there is some texture in mid bass, it does show but it's not like super good there. So if you are buying this headphone, you are really looking for the mid onwards kind of sound and if you are looking for sub bass or bass, I think this headphone will not satisfy you. It doesn't just give you the punch that you want nor the texture that you need. But it is actually really enjoyable still to listen to songs on general as long as they are not bass heavy songs. And even with bass, as long as you push it a little bit louder, it's good. Now, talking about pushing it louder, as I said, this needs a lot of power, right? But before I talk a lot of power, I talk about sound quality on this. A lot of headphones I noticed that as you push louder and louder, either there is some resonance or some weird oddity that's going on that results in the sound sounding very mushy and um, incoherent as you go higher and higher. There may be some resonance in the ear, some resonance in the headphone, or the bass itself may be just overwhelming at one point in time. Now, this headphone, very interestingly, as you push higher and higher, it still retains the clarity. Now, very little headphones I use so far retains clarity as you go higher and higher volume. In fact, these are the this is actually the rare headphone that I can barely listen to a song at 90 plus and don't go crazy. It is actually pretty okay to me to listen at 90 plus, but for a short period of time, because I find that really, really loud. But that being said, this headphone does sound pretty good at 90 plus dB. Uh, it is, as I said, once again, an exception because most other headphones at 90 plus dB, nearing 100 dB, I find they are very confusing, very, I don't know, very messy to listen, but this just maintains that quality, that cleanliness. You know, all the way to 90 plus dB average for most songs, especially modern songs. Uh, what it means that if you listen loud, <laughs> it's actually pretty good. So that is really about sound quality. I think 
you can pretty much understand where I'm coming from. Sound quality for this headphone, it's uh, dependent on your personal preference. If you are into bass, this is not for you. If you are into imaging, very precise imaging, this is not for you. If you're into very big sound stage, okay with not so great imaging, this is for you. If you like clarity and detail, this is for you. If you like transient response and nice meets, this is for you. If you don't like sibilance, this is for you. And if you like a lot of sibilance, well, this is not for you. Uh, if you want the hottest and sparkliest treble, this is also not for you. But if you want generally nice highs, it's okay, this is for you. So you can see that this headphone is all about trade-offs. It is a really interesting headphone. And not only that, it requires so much power. As I said once again, it requires easily 1, 2 or even 3 watts of power. And I can tell you if you are listening at 80 plus dB with this headphone, you will need 1 to 2 watts of power. Why I know that? It's because firstly, I cannot listen to this headphone on my Enlum. It will overload the Enlum. And secondly, on the Broadway, it will overload on certain songs. There will be some clipping and distortion because it passed the 1.8 watts of power that the Broadway can give. And uh, on the Ferrum, you know, the Hypsos, you can actually turn around and then look at the power requirement. This is the headphone that will actually show 20 volts of power or 20 watts of power onto the, you know, Hypsos uh, power output, which is quite rare. I can tell you that it's 20 m or 20 watt. I'm not too sure, but the numbers do change, and that is something abnormal because many other headphones don't even change the number there. Even the Susvara goes less, way, way lesser than this headphone when it comes to listening at equivalent level itself. Now, when it comes to amplification, power is one thing. I will just say that if your M do not provide you three to four to five watts of clean power, don't bother getting about this this headphone. This is a headphone that needs power. Do not even bother powering with M less than 3 watts. You will overload in certain tracks. Now, if you fulfill that, you know, that wattage thing, which a lot of M's can, like the A70 here or the Burson can, not the issue, right? Then it's about what kind of signature you want. Now, even though there's a transformer in between, I don't know what kind of sound signature it imparts to the headphone itself, uh, it does bring some of the M quality forward. So with the A70, I feel that it's a little bit lesser on the mids and a little bit more clean sounding, area sounding. While with the Burson, it gets that clarity, the blackness in between the tracks, but it also gives a very nice, uh, I will say a good amount of body for the mids and very nice punchy bass. As I said, the A70 is like very clean, very clear. This is just gives you a little bit more body, a little bit more mid and a little bit more punch. It feels more enjoyable to listen. Now, the GSX is very interesting. It gives a lot of body. It makes it a little bit thicker than it should. And Maybe for this headphone, you may like it because as I said, it's very fast, very transient, very enjoyable. So maybe some smoothness will make it better. Both the Burson and the, uh, I'll say as the GSX Mini does increase the warmness of the sound slightly, really, really slight. Uh, while the A70 Pro is just clean and clear, you know, really as transparent as it gets for that headphone itself uh, with the A70 Pro, the combination. But if you are looking for a like slightly a warmish sound, just you know a little tin of warmness, the Bursa and the GSX Mini will do good. And if you like the tick tick sound, or should I say the ticker sound, then maybe consider the GSX Mini instead. And that's really about it. The CA1A is an interesting headphone. This is definitely not for everyone. I really don't think it's for everyone. And uh, <laughs> considering the sound signature it produced at this price point, I think you have you should try it before you buy it. I really like the sound stage. I mean, I purchased this outright then was because of its sound stage, its clarity, and really the very all-encompassing sound. Many other headphones feel very left-right, or you know, it feels like front-forward, like a very viewer. It's a very viewer feel of the place. While this one feels like you're immersed in the music. Of course, you lose some clarity. Things are not very well positioned. Wait, let me change that statement again. You don't lose clarity. You have the clarity, but you know, you, you don't know where exactly the separation is there, but the imaging not quite there. You know, this is a headphone with a lot of things that, you know, you like and you don't like kind of feel. And uh, once again, Base is not really nice here, so if you're looking for the nicest base, especially this price point, you are not going to get it here. Now, talking about price, this is not a very cheap headphone. I mean, the headphone itself, I believe, is 2000 US, and the this thing, the transformer, is 500. So in Singapore, I actually purchased it, I think, for 3.3 or 3.7 K. I've uh, forgotten, it's about 3000 plus Sing dollars for this whole combination itself. Honestly, I enjoy it. I really like the sound of this setup here. 
In fact, I like this more than many other headphones. And not only that, because it's very comfortable to wear. The foam may look very cheap, but it's actually really nice to use. And it's not very heavy, 440 grams instead of 500, 600 grams. The distribution of the weight is very good. The sound, the sound stage is just huge. And if I'm not looking for something distracting, this is also very enjoyable because there's no sibilance. And sounds are not like very distinct. So they have this very nice feel and that covers all around you and... <laughs> I don't know how to explain. Very enjoyable for a relaxed listen. And if you want to crank the volume up, this headphone can crank it crazily high without ever feeling congested, ever feeling out of control, ever feeling weird. Um, I have tried as high as 103 dB, I remember. Uh, I don't recommend that. That will actually you know, create some deafness in you after a while. So don't do that. But I tried it before. I say it's possible and it overloads most of the M's. I mean, it overloads the Broadway, it overloads the M17, it overloads anything less than 3 watts if you are cranking all the way to 100 dB and above. And that's about it. I hope you enjoy my short little review of the CA1A. I enjoy using it. <laughs> this is my own personal purchase set. By the way, I purchased it from Jabin. I thank them for not letting me test it in the shop because this is quite a rare thing. I enjoyed it and that's why I bought it from them. But you know, after buying this, is one of the most used headphones. In fact, this is actually more used than my Warwick. Warwick is better, but Warwick is harder to wear, more troublesome. And I have many amps around that is more than 3 to 5 watts of power. In fact, my living room is actually powered by the Ferrum Ore. And uh, this is my test bench here. So it's powered by GSX Mini, A70 and, and, the, and the, you know, the Burson itself. So I have all the power I need to run this headphone almost anywhere I want. And that's why I format this review. I have went on a bit too long and I hope you understand where I'm coming from. Interesting headphone, not for everyone, but if you like it, I think this is in this is something that you can never get. No other headphone will give you. Not even electrostats, not even uh, standard headphones, not planas, a unique sound signature that either you like it or you probably won't. That's why I hope you enjoyed this review and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.